Hello everybody, we're doing Beating GMs Part 3, and in today's episode, I'm analyzing the game of how I beat GM Lev Goodman. He's not anonymous, his real name is Lev Goodman, and let's start analyzing the game. We're clicking Analysis, and now we'll click Report, and as you see, my accuracy is 81.3, and his is 80. Point nine. So let's start analyzing the game. So d4, knight f6, getting the knight out to control to center squares. Knight f3, g6, trying to fianchetto the bishop like in the last series. Bishop f4, getting my bishop out. It's called the London system, as you already know if you watched the last video. Bishop g7, e3, castles, h3. With the idea of tucking away the bishop to h2. Move h3 is not necessary right now. But as soon as he plays d6, it's necessary. So I decide to do it right now. c5, c3, protecting my pawn center. Queen b6, getting the queen out and targeting this weak pawn. How do you think is the best way to guard the pawn? The best way is queen b3. Because it offers a trade... And if he trades, you might think I get double pawns, which is bad. But it's good because my rook attacks his pawn on the half open file. He played d6. I took the queen. He took back, and I played knight b2. Normally, he could play b5, b4, and rip apart my structure, but he can't right now. So he played bishop e6. The best move was bishop d7, in my opinion, to get the idea b5 b4 but bishop e6 is good too a3 moving my pawn away from the attack of the rook and the bishop knight c6 bishop c4 which is a mistake i should have just let's say retrieved my bishop he does not punish the mistake he plays a super mistake or a blunder he should have taken taken and then played knight d5 I think I would have backed off my bishop, and then here he has b5. I would have moved back my knight, and the move b4. That's the point of this, because you get in b5, b4. This is how important this is. So bishop c4 is a mistake because of this pawn push. Bishop e2 was fine, just getting the bishop out. But I played bishop c4, I played knight a5, missing the idea. I took his bishop, which doubles up his pawns. And castled, which is a bit inaccurate. I could have played knight g5, giving me a subs not substantial, but a very good advantage. But I castled. He played knight c5. I played bishop g3, backing off. He played bishop h6. Maybe one day if I move my knight, he could sack and then win this knight with a fork. I played rook e1, guarding it for later purposes. He played b5 with the idea of b4. I played pawn takes pawn. He plays pawn takes pawn. And now these pawns are doubled and isolated. So they're very weak. And I can put pressure. Not currently, but I will have chances. Played knight e4, getting the knight out and pressurizing this pawn. Played b6, guarding the pawn. I played knight f2. This was inaccurate because I wanted to control some squares on the queen side, but I could have went aggressive and maybe even take, taken the free pawn. Knight c4, offering a trade. I accept the trade, and here I should have, I did place a rook on d1. Bishop b5 was better. Rook c8, and now knight d2. Very strong move, targeting this weak pawn. Played b5. I played knight f3 with the idea of getting the knight to e5 with, or the bishop. But better and stronger was the strong move a4, tearing apart the structure. And if he takes on a4, which is best, I take with my knight. And look at how many isolated pawns he has. One, two, three stacked up isos. And his structure is weak, and I'm better. But I didn't play that. I played knight f3. He played knight b6. b4 was better. I played knight e5, trying to hop into d7 or c6 if possible. He played rook a d8, a big mistake. So he could have played knight a4, attacking the spawn and making my rook paralyzed, but he played a big mistake. I played king f1, missing a win. 
Here I could have won the game with rook takes, rook takes, then the very strong move, knight g4. Attacking the bishop, the bishop has to come back, let's say here, and I play bishop to c7, forking the rook and the knight. This is still not super clear, but I do um, get a lot of material, and I should be winning. But I missed that, sadly, for me. I played king f1, a terrible move. I played bishop g7, I took, and I played knight c6. Targeting this guy, targeting this rook, maybe a threat of bishop c7. Well, it's equal. We played rook d7, I played king e2, we played knight a4, I guarded the pawn, which is a mistake. It paralyzes my rook, and he has the strong tactical shot. Bishop takes c3. Because if I take on c3, he has knight takes c3, forking the king and rook, and my pieces, and I'm just lost here. Because everything falls apart. Rook d1 was better, because on rook takes king takes he would like to take the pawn and he should but i have at least some compensation with the idea of to come to c8 and try to target these this pawn it's about equal so i played rook b1 instead and he missed king, with king f7 i played bishop b5 he played bishop f6 he didn't want to trade or else he would lose the rook due to a knight fork right here and the knight would fork the king and the rook and he's lost I played bishop f6 i played f4 anchoring my bishop in he played king e8 i played g4 he played rook d5 i played g5 he took i took he played rook d6 i played h4 he played knight b6 which is a mistake now he gives me one chance to just blast it open with h5 on h5, gh5, I can play rook h1 because his knight can't take the pawn immediately. For example, right here, let's say he plays king f8. h5 is not so good now because on rook h1, knight takes, rook takes h5. It's still equal, but it's not as good. And the other variation where he made the mistake, h5 is very strong because on pawn takes h5, rook h1 King of fate, rook takes h5, and all my pieces are active, and his are not. I missed h5, though. I played rook d1, I played knight d7. I traded on d7, and I should have played rook f1, keeping chances alive in the rook endgame, in which I'm slightly preferable. But I played the pawn endgame, e4, d5, played king e3, played king d6, and it's about equal. Here I made my big mistake under time pressure. So, to the point of the whole lesson of this game is not to blunder in time pressure and not to get nervous. I took here, which is bad. I should have just played king f3 or king e2 or king d2 and it's about equal. I took, he took, I played king d2 and I'm just minus 7, it's game over. He played d4. It says it's a blunder, but if you let it think it's winning. f5 I played. Pawn takes h5, and here he played king e5, the blunder of the game. Here, I could have took in the pawn with check and, and then used my d. I played h6, a very subtle move. He played king e6, and I played g6. And these two pawns are the heroes. If he takes, I play h7, and I get a queen. Game over. And if he plays king here, and he might say, oh, I'm winning, I'm winning, I can take a very important move. And I'm going to queen, and this pawn stops the square. So, from this game, what lesson can we learn? A lesson that we can learn is not to panic in time trouble. Like, I panicked in the pawn endgame, and when I traded the rooks right around here. I shouldn't have traded the rooks. Then I panicked in the pawn endgame, but I got so lucky that he played the king to the wrong square. The reason why king e7 wins is because on h6 he just plays king f8, let's say. And on g6 he takes, and on h7 he just plays here. And it's a win. So, and this is how the game ended. So, thanks for watching, and hope to see you in later episodes. Episode 7 will be the best. Bye, everybody, and see you in later episodes.